The Carvera Desktop CNC is a really nice piece of kit, but for many people, it was simply out of their budget. So now we have the Carvera Air, which is less than half the price. So what's changed and is it now half as good? Consumer 3D printers have been getting smarter and smarter, delivering a smooth and user-friendly experience. By contrast, for years we've had a range of cheap CNC machines, but they have been simplistic and many required a good amount of tinkering to succeed. But finally, some sophisticated CNC options have arrived. For some time now, we've had access through AliExpress and other stores to cheap Chinese CNC machines. In fact, I've had one of these for many years now, residing in my garage workshop. And to be honest, it performs pretty reasonably. It's big, heavy, has rugged bearings and ball screws, and offers a reasonable amount of working volume for the price. You just have to watch out for the freight cost, which with the weight of the machine is quite expensive. There's been an effort to make these machines cheaper and market them more to 3D printing hobbyists. Out of the box, these cheap machines aren't too bad, but they will perform much better with some modification, particularly changing out the spindle to give more reliability and power. There are of course more recognized brands with more tidily packaged CNC desktop machines. So more power and reliability, but still not exactly smart. And that's why for me, the Carvera desktop CNC was such a great machine. It had a polished appearance, looking great in a studio instead of just in a workshop, was capable enough to cut things like carbon fiber and aluminium out of the box, and the smart features like the wireless probe delivered the equivalent of 3D printing auto bed leveling, mapping out the top surface of the stock, delivering a perfect and consistent depth of cut, even if the material wasn't completely flat. Add to that the convenience of an automatic tool changer, and we have a machine that's as easy to use as most smart 3D printers. Personally, I set up the job and then leave the machine unattended with full confidence that it will complete successfully. The cost of all of this, too much for most, even on sale over five and a half thousand US dollars. And that brings us to the Carvera Air, the Carvera's little brother. It is launching on Kickstarter, and after the first day or so, it's easily being funded. If you like backing Kickstarters, there's some big savings to be found here. And if Kickstarter is a deal breaker for you, I'm trying to make this video from the point of view of evaluating this machine when it's released regularly. At first glance, it looks very much like the Carvera, but as you'll see in this video, there are some key differences that bring down the price. We will flesh out this comparison as we go, but now's a good time to compare the price, with the regular Carvera being over 5,500 US, and the Carvera Air being less than half of this price, and even cheaper if you get it early on Kickstarter. The one you're seeing in this video has been sent to me free of charge, to be tested in accordance with my review policy, so you can make an informed decision. As I asked at the start, this is half the price, so is it half as good? Well, let's populate that table, continuing with unboxing and setup. Like the regular Carvera, the Carvera Air arrives in a hefty crate, with the weight of this being just over 50 kilos, so keep that in mind. To access the machine, we need to bend open these tabs, which will allow the crate to pull apart in pieces. We then have some protective plastic to unwrap, before the significant task of lifting the Carvera Air up onto the table. More plastic film must then be removed, before we can open up the lid and retrieve the rest of the goodies. There's a few layers of boxes and foam, which helps keep everything compact. And once this is cleared out of the way, the machine is pretty much ready to go. The only setup is bolting on the tablet holder on either the left or the right hand side, connecting the emergency stop button, and installing one of the two supplied spoil boards that cover the bed. This is located with dowels and clamped down by the anchor in the lower left corner. To finish, we connect to the machine via USB to then enter the details for your Wi-Fi network. Back to those boxes, we've got the main tool set, this has got clamps, cutting bits, and tools required to operate the machine, an accessories box with spare part like cutting piece collets and a spare wired probe, plus safety gear like the glasses for the laser and general usage. We have a materials box containing everything we need for the example projects plus some spares. There's also some simple tools for sanding and cutting. In terms of optional accessories, in the middle here is the laser add-on, which will cost 99 US dollars. We have the optional fourth axis add-on, which will set you back $300. And then we have the PCB fabrication pack, itself costing 200 US dollars. It comes with some extra bits, extra PCB material, and then extra materials for making nice PCBs, like this UV solder mask, a mini UV curer, and a roller for applying the paste. Also relevant here is the instruction manual. 
This goes through safety, all of the parts included with the machine, and also a step-by-step -step through the software, but there's a much better way to learn how this works. And that is by completing the included examples, which is carried over as one of the best features from the regular Carvera. Materials are included for these four projects, and for each we have step-by-step -step instructions on the parameters, materials, and everything else needed to complete them. Now that the machine's together, let's update our table with another key difference, and that is working volume. The Carveras is 360 by 240 by 140 millimeters, and the Carvera Airs is just a little bit smaller in each direction at 300 by 200 by 130. X and Y is the equivalent of an AliExpress 3020 CNC router. Let's make some things, demonstrate the workflow, and point out more differences. The first project we'll be making is the LED light that has four components, and the first of those we'll be making is the PCB. Like the regular Carvera, we have a series of parts that come with different length bolts to clamp the workpiece down to the bed and spoil board. Machining PCBs is one of the huge strengths of the Carvera and here's why. The regular Carvera comes with a wireless probe that touches down in a grid pattern just like auto bed leveling on a 3D printer. When it does this, it's mapping the top of the workpiece as well as creating a mesh to measure surfaces that aren't flat. This is particularly handy if your sheet materials have warped over time. The Carvera Air also has a probe that works exactly the same way. It has a laser to trace out the bounds of the toolpath, before then probing the Z height of a range of points in a grid. The only difference is that this one, instead of being wireless, is wired. And once we're finished with it, it's got a little dock that it slots into on the side of the tool head. So workpiece probing is different compared to the Carvera, but simpler and functionally identical. With a regular CNC machine, you need to zero the top of the workpiece against the tool by moving it down in tiny increments until you hear contact and then you press a button. However, for a PCB, this is not that consistent, especially when the material might be warped and that can lead to cuts that are too shallow or too deep and the wrong size PCB traces. On both the regular and Carvera Air, the tool offset is automatically calculated by touching down on a button in the corner of the bed. Combined with the probe measuring the top of the workpiece, this ensures very accurate depth of cut, even across a warped or uneven surface. So lots of similarities, but one area that's quite different is the lack of automatic tool changing present on the Carvera, where we can load up six tools for the machine to switch automatically between throughout the job. Carvera Air instead has a manual change, but promises that it's quick and can be conducted in under 10 seconds. And I would say that is absolutely spot on. We pull down the lever, which opens the jaws. We can then pull out the old cutter and repeat the process to put in the new one. Under 10 seconds, absolutely. As an experiment, I called over my 10 year old, explained it to him and he nailed it first go. It speaks to how simple and intuitive this process is, especially compared to a typical spindle, which requires two spanners to rotate a nut and tighten a collet. So still easy to use, but we don't have the convenience of setting up up to six tools before a job starts. Instead, if we have a multi-tool job, we have to change them manually throughout. And when there is such a tool change, the machine will pause and prompt you to put in the next tool. And once you've done this, you can hit OK in the software, or instead press the physical button on top of the machine to continue the job. The next component is the base of the LED lamp, machined from this thick chunk of plastic. And seeing it done gives us a chance to talk about another point of difference, the vacuum. I think Carvera and Carvera Air both require a bit of vacuuming when the job is done to clean up the insides. But the regular Carvera also has an integrated vacuum cleaner attached via this dust shoe. And everything ends up being collected in this removable bin at the rear left of the machine. Regular Carvera also lets you choose to attach an external vacuum cleaner whereas Carvera Air simplifies things by having an external vacuum cleaner being the only option. To use it, we pull the vacuum hose off the placeholder, clip on the dust shoe around the base of the spindle, and connect the vacuum hose to that instead. This obscures the view for manual tool changes, but it's still pretty straightforward. On the rear left of the machine, we have the plug for the vacuum. You'll need a printed adapter for this. There is one provided, but before I realized this, I already designed my own. And now, of course, you can plug in your external vacuum cleaner, although the weight of it will probably make it fall straight out, so you'll need to provide some sort of scaffolding to prevent this from happening. The power of the suction is very much going to depend on the vacuum that you connect, and from my testing, this configuration did work pretty well, sucking up most of the debris, but I didn't end up using it beyond this job, simply because my vacuum is so loud. So far from the examples, we've made the four components that make up the LED lamp, and there's G-code provided for four different acrylic patterns. This is a nice project that shows off the machine well. We've also machined this 3D relief 
out of model board and it comes out with exquisite detail. Although I don't think I bolted this one down properly, as we can see the Z height is gradually changing over the job. That's what we can make with the base machine, but what can we make with the optional add-ons? The regular Carvera has a diode laser built right into the tool head. But for the Carvera Air, money is saved by making this an optional add-on. It's actually designed to go into the tool head just like a router bit would. And before we start, we have a one-time setup, taking note of the number labelled on the side. Each laser module has a slightly different focal length. This has been tested, so all we need to do is to come into the advanced settings and enter the value, which will be saved for all future use. After loading up the laser G-code into the Carvera controller software, we load it into the tool head when prompted, just like any other router bit. And don't worry, it is keyed so it can't rotate without permission, before plugging in the cable to the port up the top of the tool head. The tip of the laser will be calibrated like any other tool, before zigzagging back and forth, engraving the raster path. The little orange shield does provide some eye protection, but the included goggles are a much safer bet, considering there's no laser filter built into the acrylic lid. The end result is pretty novel and adds some functionality to the machine, but this type of engraving is probably the limit to what it can do. One thing that's identical between the two machines is that the fourth axis is an optional add-on. It's hard to describe in words how it works, so it's probably best to just show you. To fit it, we remove the anchor from the corner of the bed, and then using a combination of dowel pins and bolts, there's only one position where it will fit. Like the laser module, there's a port waiting on the base of the bed to plug this in. A sample block of modeling board is included. The mounting for this is quite secure, with lots of locks to stop things from vibrating loose. And here we can see the laser preview function saved me from a lot of trouble, because I hadn't extended the headstock, and a nasty collision was about to follow. So I moved everything down into the correct position, retightened all the fasteners, and started the two-stage demo job. The first being a roughing pass using a flat end mill. Over time, this will remove the bulk of the excess material before we change to a fine engraving bit and do a finishing pass with high precision. This is the most expensive add-on and won't be for everyone, but for those that are interested, it unlocks a whole new world of potential for what you can make. The example materials and projects are a great way to learn how this works, and honestly, it's one of the strengths of the whole setup. But after a while, you're going to want to process your own projects. In terms of CAM software, the software page has guides and profiles for a range of options. The most popular for CNC is likely Fusion 360, and for laser, the most popular option would be Lightburn. But on both machines, I still prefer to use the free and open source Kirimoto. Kirimoto already has a profile inbuilt for the standard Carvera, and all we need to do to support the Carvera Air is to change the volume of the work area. The other thing I like to do is to add this to the NG code, which will pull the machine back to the clearance position once the job is done. So let's machine some functional parts using aluminium. And perhaps you saw this video a few weeks back where I tried to push an injection molder to work in a way it wasn't meant to. My material for the parts was plate aluminium, but I didn't utilize the spoil board like the example projects. They were all cut with a mounting tab left behind, which requires the part to be cut free and then any remnants cleaned up, which I personally hate. So instead, I get some sacrificial thin MDF, line it with blue painter's tape, then super glue on top of that. The underside of the stock has the matching tape and then the whole lot gets clamped down as one. There's two parts to the plunge mechanism that I needed to make, and each of them required two machining strategies. The first being a pocket, that's a cut not the whole way through, followed by an outline pass, cutting out several bolt holes as well as the external perimeter. This is the type of job I usually run on the regular Carvera, and the Carvera Air plowed through it without missing a beat. The perk of using this technique for mounting is there's no support tabs, so all we need to do to retrieve our finished part is to peel it away from the blue tape. The second part worked just as well and also looked great. After tapping the threads in the thicker part, I was able to assemble everything with the parts fitting perfectly. And although this project didn't work out for me, it certainly wasn't because of these custom parts. How about some carbon fiber sheet? Another thing I cut frequently on the regular Carvera. You might remember this previous video where I designed and created an automatic pellet feeder for my miniature goats. A while back, I did a small redesign that changed the gearing, but this left the drive gear particularly small. And since then, I've had a series of failures, from this tiny 3D printed gear breaking and leaving the goats hungry. These are tiny gears, so I will need a tiny corn bit. I'm using one of the ones that came with the machine, and to prep it, we have this special tool, where we put the cutting bit and the collar inside and twist it, which will press the collar into place ready to go. 
I was worried about snapping the cutter, so I went pretty conservative with the depth of cut, and I did end up snapping it, but that was my fault because I set the wrong thickness of the stock, and then I proceeded to accidentally vacuum it up. I did manage to retrieve it, and then cut a few spares as well as the idler gear, and I'm pleased to report that all of these came out really clean and crisp. Their dimensional accuracy was perfect as well, giving me a really satisfying press fit. I know carbon fibre is an unusual choice for this, but I'm entirely confident this is going to stand up well compared to the 3D printed versions I was using before. One other option for cam is Carvera cam, which has been listed as coming soon since the original Carvera was launched. Finally, it's in beta, but there are some pretty big limitations. Firstly, you can't import 3D geometry like an STL and then generate toolpaths from it. Personally, that's a big one for me, as I find it much easier to visualize when I can see the 3D model. Secondly, it doesn't currently support 4-axis toolpaths, so in the short term, other software will be required. And finally, it's pretty basic overall, but in particular with documentation and things like tooltips. Despite this, it is functional and we can do things like edit our material, rotate and transform our geometry to set the origin. We have a choice of contour, pocket and drilling, and probably the best thing so far is that the entire library of Carvera cutting bits are included. Once we generate the toolpath, we'll have a simple 3D preview. We can then export this and send it to the machine. I did cut another gear out just to verify everything worked and there weren't any problems. But for now, I'll be sticking with Kirimoto because it's much more powerful, featuring things like toolpath simulation. If you want to learn more, I've linked a detailed video from Makera down in the description. Let's summarize pros and cons and also discuss who this is best suited to. Firstly, I think it's pretty sensible the changes they've made to simplify the machine and make it cheaper. The biggest loss is probably the automatic tool changer, but the manual quick change version that's been supplied instead is very effective. Features that in my opinion are key to this machine being powerful and convenient are still in place, such as the surface probing and automatic tool tip offset. Plus, if you want to expand functionality, you can do this later quite easily. In terms of cutting performance, this produced identical results to the larger Carvera. The Carvera Air is a smaller machine, but it's still quite hefty, which we can put down to its rugged diecast frame. I think both versions of the Carvera excel at prototyping PCBs, and they're both also fantastic for making custom small parts from soft metals or carbon fiber sheet. If you're an enthusiast like me, where these projects come up quite often, I think you'll get a lot of value out of the Carvera Air. I think the features and form factor are also ideal for schools, especially considering you can tell the machine to halt if the lid is opened mid-job. I also like that you're not locked in to any proprietary software or cutting bits. You can use whichever ones you can get your hands on, and there's multiple collet sizes available along with the tool to change between them. I did have some problems during my testing, such as the machine having a timeout error, stopping on the spot and ruining the job, but firmware updates since this point seem to have eliminated this. My main complaint has been the lid, with the adhesive that holds on this foam not being up to the job, as well as the adhesive that holds on this strip on the internal corners. And I'm glad my Kara Cam is finally here, but it's going to take some time before it's really usable. I have been sent a list of proposed changes and improvements, will be applied to the production version shipping to customers, but of course nothing here is guaranteed. And that brings us back to the current point of sale, Kickstarter. Anything on Kickstarter is not guaranteed. You can save some money with an early bird special, but it comes with inherent risk. If you're unfamiliar with Kickstarter, I did a deep dive video with Angus from Makers Muse, and that's linked in the description below. The Carvera Air might be smaller than the Carvera, but I think it's just as capable. This version is more affordable due to some sensible changes without losing the user friendliness, which makes it so appealing. Kickstarter unfortunately adds some jeopardy, but at least we know this company has delivered before. Let me know what you think about the Carvera Air, particularly the price, in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy desktop CNC milling. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.